This is the Ryzen 5 7500F. It's six cores, 12 threads with a five gigahertz boost clock. And if you can find it for 125, then it's the best value processor right now. When paired with a 4060 Ti, it even rivaled a $550 processor in a few games. So what's the catch? There isn't one. It's just really, really good. If you want to know how to save money when building computers, then check out the PC build guides on my website, oztalkshw.fun. They range from $260 all the way up to $700, and I update them every few months. They're really there to make sure you spend your money wisely, and it doesn't cost you anything. You can also pick up some uh, fun hard drive merch while you're at it. OzTalksHW.fun. Back to the video. The cheapest AM5 processor you can buy from a US retailer is $180. The 6 core, 12 threaded Ryzen 5 8500G. And on paper, it seems like a good deal. 6 cores, 12 threads, 5 gigahertz boost clock, and a solid integrated GPU. But if you look a little bit closer, you will see that AMD cut quite a few corners. It has half the amount of L3 cache as the Ryzen 5 7600. It only has two full Zen 4 cores, and the remaining four cores are efficiency Zen 4C cores. And lastly, it only supports PCIe 4.0 instead of 5.0. And if you're using an NVMe SSD, which most people will with this processor, then you only have four PCIe lanes for your video card. That's pretty bad. I'm not saying that you shouldn't buy it, but there are better options out there if you don't need an integrated GPU. The Ryzen 5 7500F, for example, is also six cores and 12 threads. It has double the L3 cache. It uses PCIe 5.0 with full 16 lanes for your video card and it's only 125 US dollars. As a matter of fact, the only difference between it and the 7600 is it's 100 megahertz slower and it doesn't have an integrated GPU, and that's it. And I'm telling you now, it's really good. I stumbled through the waking hours before. I tested the 7500F with an RTX 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM, a Gigabyte AX Eagle B650 motherboard, and with Windows 11 Home. So starting out with Civilization 6 at 1080p using the Ultra preset, we see the 7500F lead the pack of budget processors. It performs a whopping 43% better than the 5600 and even rivals the 7950X. It really has the opportunity to spread its legs in this game, and it's something that I wasn't expecting from it. The 7500F does not win as decisively in Rainbow Six Siege, but it still does a really good job. At 1080p, with the very high preset in Vulcan, it only performs 9% better than the 5600 and falls quite a bit behind the 7950X. It looks like both cores and single-threaded performance matter in this game, but still, the 7500F averaged over 400 FPS, so it's more than enough for highly competitive gameplay. We see similar behavior in Hogwarts Legacy. The 7500F pulls ahead by 9% on average compared to the 5600, but it does have better 1% lows, indicating less frame stuttering and an overall smoother experience. It slightly edges out the 7950X by a handful of frames, and that was a pleasant surprise. It's always nice when your $125 processor beats your $555 one. And lastly, we have Cyberpunk 2077, a game that hammers both the CPU and the GPU. The 7500F is about 12% faster than the 5600 with better 1% lows overall. It rivals the 7950X on average, but has worse 1% lows. This means the 7950X offers a smoother experience overall. On average, the 7500F is 17% faster than the 5600 and only 11% slower than the 7950X in the games that I tested. Now take this with a grain of salt because I only tested four games, 
but it does lead us to believe that this processor is a tier faster than its predecessor. But performance only matters if the price is able to agree with it, and thankfully the 7500F has a phenomenal price at AliExpress right now. For the price that I bought it, $145 with a CPU cooler, the 7500F rivals the 5600 in value. The amount of money you pay per frame is slightly less with the 7500F than with the 5600, and it performs better. Now it does lose to the 4500, and that kind of makes sense, but the extra 52% performance you get with the 7500F makes it completely worth it. Now if we account for the entire cost of the platform, then things change a little bit. A decent AM4 motherboard is only $80, but a decent AM5 one is about $120. DDR4 RAM, decent memory, is about $34, $35, but decent DDR5 memory is about $60. The 7500F is worse value, and there isn't much to say here other than AM4 is much older and the technology is cheaper as a result. The 7500F does get you on a modern platform, but the barrier to entry on AM5 is still fairly high. I think if you're building a new computer for $750-ish or more, then go AM5. But underneath that, AM4 is still a good platform that will last you a while. And just for you guys, here's an example build with the 7500F for about $700 that I would recommend right now. It has a great aftermarket cooler, a solid B650 motherboard, 16 gigs of DDR5 RAM, a 500 gig NVMe SSD, the 8 gigabyte Radeon 6650 XT, a BitPhoenix Nova Mesh case, and a 550 watt power supply. You can find all the component links in the video description, and I even have a build on the channel already with similar enough parts that will show you the expected performance. The 7500F is a legendary processor, and if you can find it for 160 or less new with a cooler, then I totally recommend it. I don't think AMD is going to release any budget processors without major drawbacks anytime soon. So I think you should pull the trigger if you're waiting for something of that caliber. With that being said though, it has shown me how cheap the AM4 platform has gotten and how much further AM5 still needs to go. But I'm sure in the coming weeks, months, and years, we will see that even out. What do you guys think of the 7500F? Would you use it? How do you think it is in relation to the 7600 and AMD's new 8000 G and F processors? Let me know in the comments. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.